What's going on everybody? Welcome to another Flash tutorial video. In this video, what we're going to be talking about is how you can return files with Flask. So that's pretty simple, so it won't take us very long to get through this one. So let's open up init.py, and first of all, in the imports here from Flask, go ahead and import uh, send file as well. Now we'll come on down to, uh, this will be a good spot, copy this paste and we're gonna have a couple of functions here the first one is gonna be the page that the user might visit like file downloads file downloads and this is gonna return uh, render template template and we'll just have this be downloads.html and then we'll have another function that will be uh, return files or return file, that's fine. Um, and then return file. And instead of returning a template, this returns a send file. Now, um, we'll just leave that empty for now. And first, let's go ahead and, and get this downloads.html done. So let's go over here. And um, as usual, let's just duplicate the 404. And we'll call it downloads.html. Open that up. And let's start cleaning this. Get rid of all that. And then basically div to div here. That's good enough. OK, so then within this file, uh, we're going to add a little download button. So it'll be, we'll have it actually link here to slash return file. Uh, and we'll make the target bl a blank tab. And then in here, button class equals, and this will be a btn, btn dash default button, slash button, batong. <laughs> and between that, we'll just have it say download. Okay, so that's a good enough downloads. We'll go ahead and save that. And good enough. And now let's just pass a file in here. So going back over here into static, let's get some files. So this is just a little image of Python. So Python at JPG. Feel free to use whatever image you have at your disposal. And then let's just give the full path to that image. So that would just, you can double click here and grab at least the starting path. So send file. And so you can send to that. And then it was just python.jpg. Now, you can get away with just doing that, and optionally, you can have uh, basically like a file name. So you can say, um, you know, attachment, attachment file name equals python.jpg. Something like that is fine. So we can save that, and let's close out of here, and let's uh, reload there. And we'll bring over the website. And what was that? Download files, I think. Download files, maybe? No, that's not the name. What was the name of our thing? File downloads. All right. <laughs> file dash downloads. All right. So here we are. And then we have the download button. Opens a new tab. And sure enough, what's returned is just the image for us. So we can move that aside. And uh, just for another example, I've got a real short PDF here. Um, oh, hey, dot PDF. And uh, the return file here will be, uh, we can just call this oh, hey, dot PDF. Come over here, change this to oh, hey, dot PDF, save. Oh, it looks like, oh, I guess I never put that in. And then let's try again. There we go. And let's come over back to our website. Uh, let's refresh. And click on that. Oh, we're still returning that. Let's see. We might be cached here. Yeah, sure enough, we were cached. If you're cached, uh, Shift F5 if you're in Chrome. Anyway, here's our awesome PDF. Um, and important, most importantly, it acts as a PDF. And if you were to go to you know, save it and whatnot, it would be saved as a PDF. 
Okay, so anyway, that's pretty simple. The send file is pretty robust. You don't really need to do too much else when you're doing like working with it. So that's pretty nice. Now, the next tutorial that we're going to be talking about is what happens if you want to like protect a file. So maybe only certain users can access that file. So with Python programming.net, for example, I let the users just download the tutorial videos, but you know, you could make it so easily so the user can't access the page to get to the download button but the download would almost certainly have to reside within the static directory so the static directory is public to everybody so that's no good <laughs> all right so uh, in the next tutorial we'll be talking about how you can make a protected directory that is not accessible to the public and is only accessible to uh, people or in scenarios that you specifically specify so uh, that's what we'll be talking about in the next tutorial. If you have questions, comments on this tutorial, feel free to leave them below. Otherwise, as always, thanks for watching. Thanks for all the support and subscriptions. Until next time.